is that we uh, do not get swayed away by the interview experiences of others. So we were getting a lot of transcripts from the other candidates, and it was a daunting experience that there there was a uh, uh, there was an atmosphere of apprehension that what we, what is going to be asked to me will I be able to answer. Hello everyone. Welcome to I Exam B. And today we have with us Ms. Sohini Bhattacharya, who has recently uh, uh, successfully uh, cleared her RBI Grade B 2023 exam and is an RBI Grade B officer now. So many congratulations, Sohini, from myself and the entire team of I Exam B. Thank you so much, ma'am. So very interesting uh, profile. I'll just give a brief about Sohini. Sohini uh, has completed her <clears throat> MBA in finance in 2023 itself. And after that, she got a campus placement in ICICI Bank where she continues to work and also prepare for RBI. This is a first attempt and she has cleared it in the first attempt. Uh, it's very interesting to know how she got to know about RBI and then uh, decided that she will be preparing and giving this exam. So let's hear it from Sohini itself. Uh, so Sohini, you were telling me how did you get to know about the RBI exam and uh, it was a very interesting way and that motivated you. So what was it? Ma'am, uh, during the first year of MBA, I found that uh, I found finance quite interesting out of all the domains. So I kind of started researching a bit that what more can I uh, get to do in finance uh, apart from being in corporate. And uh, there was a professor at our IIM who used to previously teach, impart training to the recently recruited RBI Grade B officers at a Reserve Bank Staff College in Chennai. So one day, luckily in our class, he uh, came to mention about this examination and I found that this is quite interesting. So I did a bit of Googling and I found that this is a very promising career scope it has. And uh, so as a result, I thought that let's give it a shot. So uh, from the end of the last year, I kind of started uh, preparing bit bit by bit. Uh, and after the notification came out in May this year, I started preparing full uh, wholeheartedly for this. And yeah, that was how I. Yeah, so it's actually very interesting because many times uh, students, you don't even get to know that how good an opportunity uh, RBI is. And they directly recruiting at grade B level, which is a manager level, is a very, very big opportunity. So like uh, one of the sir uh, was teaching at IIM Amritsar, where she has uh, done her MBA from. Uh, similarly, you know, Dr. Sharma at our organization also is there who, who guides for descriptive English and for interviews, who is an ex-CGM RPA. He's also visiting faculty at IIM A <clears throat> and IIM Lucknow. Uh, where he frequently interacts with students uh, like this and get people get to know uh, how interesting this is. So uh, great, Sohini, you also came across like that and uh, got to know about RBI and prepared. So if we start with, you know, when you got to know, you researched and you found out that how good the opportunity is, I'm sure you found out the exam pattern that, uh, you know, this is how the exam happens in three phases. So what was your strategy to move ahead with that phase one phase two phase three and was it all simultaneously or separately right ma'am uh, so uh, since i already had the cad background and also uh, my mba specialization the major was in finance in the second year so i kind of found uh, a similarity similarity between the course uh, between our course but what we had learned in mba and the syllabus requirements of rbi grade b like the phase one uh, ma lot, uh, major part of it is similar to that of CAT and also in phase two the paper one that is the finance and management paper that uh, the, the, the static portion of that paper has a lot of congruence to what we have learned in MBA in finance. So I thought that uh, this might be helpful for me since uh, I will not have to start everything anew and uh, apart from that the ESI and the English descriptive I had to do. So as far as strategy is concerned, for initially after the notification was out, I focused entirely on phase two. So I initially started with uh, finance and management since it was a bit known to me and I uh, kept brushing up on that. Uh, after that, uh, before around uh, three weeks before the prelims, I shifted my focus to the prelims preparation. I attempted mocks, I uh, did some revision in the topics which I was weak in 
and after the prelims the phase 1 was done i again shifted back to phase 2 did some answer writing attempted mock tests uh, for the interview ma'am i uh, took the interview course from i exam and at first the mock interview was very insightful very helpful the panel members they gave me positive feedback and that was a boost of confidence for me so that was a broad overview ma'am okay so uh, very nicely you summarized the entire uh, journey so if i break it down for the benefit of the people who are listening uh, like you said your cat preparation was very very helpful and it was recent so you remembered a lot of things uh, and this must i'm sure it was very very helpful for your quant reasoning uh, english specifically because uh quant and reasoning questions have you know increased in the level for you it was the first attempt but over the years the questions uh, level has uh, increased so that was something that has helped you uh it, was your ga preparation also done in similar manner how did you go for ga because it has the highest weightage in the uh, phase 1 overall right ma'am uh, so for uh, ga i obviously had to prepare it from the scratch so uh, for the current affairs uh, i i usually refer to the economic times i am a regular reader of that paper so that covered a lot of portion as well as the rbi website so mm-hmm. in the in the phase 1 this time there have been questions from the directly from the website as well from the notifications and such so these two sources were really helpful for my ga preparation for, for the that's phase a, that's very good i think uh, uh, having a regularity uh in reading newspaper and following the news is a very very advantageous thing because of, uh, uh i'm sure it helped you to talk in the interview also give data and support your uh, answers there because it does give a lot of uh, knowledge to you you know subconsciously consciously the one is yes giving the exam remembering the facts there but it also sharpens uh, your understanding a lot Uh, okay. Great. So uh, that that was good. And was there any specific time frame that you were focusing on for the news? Uh, six um, months, yes, four yeah. months. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, it was overall six months, but with special focus to the last three months, like last April, three months. May, June, and till the first ten, uh, nine, ten days of July, like before the exam. True, true. Because uh, majority questions do come from the last three, but yes, they can go back. Uh, so six months is a very safe. Uh, thing to follow with a lot of focus on the 3 2 to 3 months so that's that's absolutely a bang on <laughs> uh, thing that you followed here also uh, if i talk about phase 2 you said finance and management was easier relatively because at least you understood all the static parts all the concepts and all were known to you uh, how about the dynamic aspects related to the finance uh, paper specifically management does not have so much dynamic but um, how did you tackle that Uh, again ma'am for the finance uh, so the current affairs portion the newspaper was suffi- sufficient as well as the rbi website was also there then uh, i took up mock tests as well to judge my preparation level for the esi part ma'am the schemes portion it was a bit tough for me absolutely i was coming to that how did you do that because this would have been a new animal for you to tackle you know all of a sudden so uh, uh, what was the strategy how did you try to remember so much about the schemes because there's so many schemes so how did you choose those schemes and how did you try to remember uh, the information related to the schemes ma'am uh, for this as far as the schemes are concerned i kind of focused on what are the schemes which are in news recently in the last 2 3 months and mm-hmm. i firstly did, uh, did the static portion like the year of launch and the various details as there and then i covered the dynamic and the current of, of affairs approach that what is happening in the scheme what new is coming in the scheme and i limited i didn't do a lot of hundreds and thousands of schemes because it uh, since i had a paucity of time as well it was not very possible to cover the, all the all the schemes un- under the sun so i kind of focused on those which are recently in the news as well uh, i also did the reports and indices which uh, which are the released by world bank imf etc which are important from the current affairs point of view right so you followed the uh you know the current affairs and from there you picked up things and also that's i think a very methodical way so you used to make your own notes to remember these things yes ma'am yes ma'am i make my notes okay great great so um uh, esi like you were saying uh, you know a, a lot of uh, focus of the exam is on different kinds of reports and schemes uh but before that did you also spend time to do the static portion and understand the concepts in esi 
yes ma'am a bit because since i had no exposure to economic concepts as such before this uh in uh, in mba again we had papers of micro and macro economics so that was a bit helpful i'd say but not as much as the finance and management part so yes i covered the uh, covered uh, a basic of the static portion initially and then i moved on straight to the current affairs because i followed the previous year pa- papers and mostly it is current based the esi okay. paper so that's why true true so how much time were you spending so in uh, because you were also working and so how much time were you spending and how did you divide that between your phase 1 and phase 2 preparation all uh, right ma'am since uh, ma'am I, i am still working and i was working at that time so uh, after office i would get around 3 4 hours per day in the weekdays uh, and in the weekends i would like devote around 10 to 12 hours on the saturdays and sundays but yes since i was a new joiner at that time i would get some off time in office as well and i'd just start reading or revising or some attempt some sectional mock tests as well to to keep myself engaged in the preparation and uh, ma'am as far as the uh, division between the time is concerned so as i said before uh, three weeks up to three weeks before phase 1 i completely devoted to phase 2 and phase 1 uh, three weeks pehle i just shifted yeah, right yeah so i think uh, uh, you were you had identified your strength and weakness well and that's that's important because accordingly we strategize we make our own plans uh, so because you were a uh, strong in the qre aspect because of your cat preparation you knew that you you could do that uh, you know before the exam so 3 weeks uh, was uh, uh, was enough for you to uh, do that along with uh, strengthening your papers for uh, phase 2 uh, okay. yes i descriptive english also anything specific strategy was followed or practice that you did uh ma'am specific strategy is like uh, i followed what were the topics which were ha- which have been asked in the previous years and i kind of jot down uh, i found that it's mostly the current affairs which i am doing uh, it will be sufficient to answer and uh, this year if you follow the paper ma'am there was a direct question which was somewhat related to the management in fact i attempted that so that was a icing on the cake the, it yeah. kind of uh, yeah was doable that question right right so it's important to keep reading and um, you know understanding with you also uh, it gives you a lot of fodder and i'm sure even writing style and all improves uh, if we are reading uh, constantly and practicing were you also typing and practicing before the exam yes ma'am i was i was uh, typing i was typing it entirely because uh, due to two, two reasons one is that since uh, if you constantly type your speed will increase and the second is the uh, chances of typing errors or grammatical errors spelling mistakes it will reduce and since phase 2 is a long exam it is of 5 5 and 1/2 hours especially by the time you come to english you were already drained down so that habit of uh, typing i think it's very important to sustain on that d day So did you t- devote some specific time like this is when you started typing before the exam or was it continuous It was ma'am after the phase 1 results were out okay. I started I would pick up topics and uh, brush them revise them up and then I'd write a 10 marker or 15 marker based on the relative importance of the topic Great great I think that's uh, no, wonderful it's a lot of practice is important and uh, this is also important that you know after phase 1 uh, you started immediately or did you wait for the result I started immediately ma'am. Yeah, so I started immediately. So that's, that's why I specifically asked because we really don't have enough time after the result comes in. So it's very very important we don't wait to see it because we also understand, you know, once we have given the exam, uh, I mean the candidate has given the exam, you kind of have a sense of how you have done it and uh, if uh, even if you, there's no downside right. to be to be honest. uh if you prepare of course the chance you get through if you are not getting through you also learnt along the way for your next attempt right which right. you should again start immediately preparing for True. so uh, there's no downside that way so it's great uh, so you need that you started immediately and uh, you were pre- and you had already done all your concepts before phase 1 so you were in the practicing mode uh, now Absolutely. so when the results uh, so after phase 2 what did you do did you wait did you not wait uh, did you relax for some time for phase 3 dekha jayega how was your reaction after giving the phase 2 exam uh, after phase 2 i did relax a bit but i didn't stop the newspaper reading habit 
so that was a constant i kept on going through the daily economic times paper newspaper but yes uh, the whole hearted preparation was on stall for some time and then our results were out on august 28 okay. then fr- again from 29th i was back on track that yeah so my okay. interview was also a bit early it was on the 6th okay. of october so i didn't have that much time so i had to start right away okay so no uh, what was then the the focus area and uh, uh, the modus operandi for preparing for phase 3 or the interview stage ma'am uh, for the interview stage my first uh, idea was that i'll have to attempt mock interviews and then i also came across that that's where i came across i exam b i i found that uh, sushil sir uh, uh, there was a mentorship of sushil sir as well who has been in the organization so i found that this is a quite a promising opportunity where i can understand my weaknesses and bank upon my strengths that was one thing and then i i followed the rbi website on a daily basis then i did the rbi bulletins i did the speeches by the governors and the deputy by the governor and the deputy governors uh, i basically i went through the rbi website on a 100% basis that was and that, that's actually very important because you know there it's it's a gold mine of information of everything that's happened and the best part i think i like about the rbi website is so updated to the minute right it's not like there's a update coming after a lag of some days or weeks it's, it's up to date everything that's happening uh, you get the entire nerve of your country's financial system and where we are standing in the world uh, so well and uh, the governor speeches and the deputy governor speeches uh, <clears throat> are very to the point and crisp and give the entire uh, in a such a simplified manner they'll give you the entire view of whatever topic they're talking about so uh, i think it's a must for any interview uh, candidate who's going for uh, rbi interviews uh, or otherwise interested in making a career in the financial space so uh, it's it's a delight to read those um, speeches so great i think uh, so ini so you kept up uh, your preparation uh, how was your actual interview so ini my uh, actual interview ma'am was entirely based out of my bio data mm-hmm. so uh, i i since i'm working as a management trainee in the treasury uh, in icic bank i had questions a lot of questions around foreign exchange around treasury around hedging uh, then ma'am as a part of my office work i had prepared a write up on the internationalization of inr which is a quite a hot topic these days and i had mentioned it in my bio data i was expecting mm-hmm. questions so there was a whole lot of discussion on that topic as well there were a discussion on my hobbies there were few generic questions as well a uh, few based on the financial uh, ta- aspects which i had studied again in during my mba so overall it was a 20 22 minutes experience and the panel was very cordial and i was about uh, able to answer around uh, 80 85 of the questions percent of the questions yeah so that's great i think a uh, very key points that you mentioned uh, so hini uh, your one the questions are mostly coming around from your bio data so if we prepare well if we understand ourselves well there's a high possibility that we can lead the interview and you know be uh, prepared for it and second part that what soini said you know she could answer 80 to 85% of the questions it is important again why because interview is not about an mcq where you know right answer gives you marks or not correct answer or not attempting you know takes away your marks or uh, it doesn't add up to your score it's a personality test so uh, uh, nobody will ever end up answering 100% of the questions ever because you know uh, the panel consists of people from diverse uh, areas and of course accumulative knowledge is so much uh more than what uh, we can gather in one place so uh, I- I- we have to keep that confidence that we have to answer uh, as much as we do justice to our own profile and uh, uh, in a in a very confident manner so your personality is also being tested so the way you answer what your body language is what are the choices of words you are making how you are articulate becomes equally important so uh, thanks for bringing that up so ini that uh, how many questions you were able to answer and then how well you had prepared considering your background your profile of the work that you are doing and the kind of education you have got because that gives insights into the kind of questions that will 
uh, come in so we also try to you know in that uh, interview program that we we also had sessions guiding about how to fill information in your bio data and once you filled it then what all to prepare where to focus on where to sharpen and on all so great uh, so any so any any mistakes you will say that you may have made or you were cognizant of not to make and you will advise the future aspirants about them to be careful about them um and i would say that uh, if given a chance i would have sh- would have started with the answer writing a bit early that was one thing uh, in the initial uh, if, if right before phase 2 exam i was a bit struggling with some of the some of the answer writing stuff so that is one thing that start answer writing early uh second is that a big uh, do not get swayed away by the interview experiences of others so we were getting a lot of transcripts from the other candidates and it was a daunting experience that there there was a uh, uh, there was an atmosphere of apprehension that what what is going to be asked to me will i be able to answer so i think to be confident in the interview and to give the best of what you know that's important rather than getting afraid of what is being asked to others because it will be around your bio data mostly that's that's true true, true true so actually that's the the good and the bad part of the transcript the good part is okay you get to know a little about the pattern the things uh, which could also be suitable to your profile but the uh, caveat uh, about all this is that interview will always be unique to every person based on their profile based on the answers you are given even the same question if you end up giving a different answer the path changes again right so right. the the line of questioning again changes so yes um, you know Uh, the strategies listening you know like we are doing this strategy also these are to give insights into you know how one went about but based on one's own strengths own weaknesses the kind of education background experience we have we have to carve out our own strategy which is suitable to uh, us the way of studying the way of working the the conditions that we are in somebody would be working somebody would not be working somebody would have a finance background somebody would have a non finance background uh, you know so there are always things that add up to your preparation but we have to identify those and accordingly take the path ahead and that's that's the idea of all these uh, uh, you know conversations also so that you know we can pick out the points that are suitable to our own uh preparation and our strategy so uh that that's great sohini so thanks uh, so much sohini for uh, uh, sharing in detail your entire journey and many many congratulations uh, you've made it in the first attempt and a lot of clarity you had and you started early and uh, you were able to do it in the first attempt so um i hope this encourages a lot of other students uh who are looking for good opportunities in the financial sector and in the government space rbi is a great great opportunity learning organization you will you will uh, uh, learn so much about so much different different aspects of the about the economy and the financial system and the policies that are uh, uh, made and uh, and you know cherry on the cake is being recruited at the grade b level <laughs> at the manager level so uh Thanks again and many many congratulations so any once again wishing you a bright future and a career ahead with RBI Thank you so much ma'am it was a pleasure to have this session with you ma'am thank you thank you so much